What's up you guys, Shardy Mr. Prime here doing another Bandai Tamashii Nation's action figure review on the SH Figure Arts Samurai Spider-Man. If you're trying to pick this up, you can get it at Big 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 Big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. I gotta thank two different people for convincing me to get this figure, both Devil's Do and Harley Morenstein from Epic Mealtime. Uh, check out their YouTube channels in the description below. Uh, Devil's Do, I got to see his figure in hand, and then Harley Morenstein, he posted a video talking about his he did a review on it and I was like man all right I'm getting it so I did get this on eBay there's a chance that this could be a knockoff so if you're more familiar with this figure than I am let me know in the comments below anyway there we have the packaging and then on the side right there it says Samurai Spider-Man on the very back you can see some product shots and then on the side you can see some more Samurai Spider-Man it says Samurai Spider-Man at the very top right there it says Samurai Spider-Man and Marvel right there do the SH figure where it's plop and come on plop and, and there it goes, and on the inside, guess what it says? Guess what it says? Samurai Spider-Man! Oh, I didn't see that coming. And then on the inside, you can see the figure right over there. All right, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's a Samurai Spider-Man figure out of the packaging up on a Mafex stand. Now, this figure does not come with its own stand, which would have been nice, but I gotta say, knockoff or not, I really like this figure a lot. I think it's a very good piece. I like the articulation, even though it can get hindered here and there just from the bulkiness of having all that armor. I can still get him into a Spider-Man pose, which I really dig a lot, man. And a lot of nice sculpted detail and paint on this thing. I'm a little thrown off by the teal. Uh, teal on a Spider-Man figure is kind of weird. I mean, Spider-Gwen, yeah, sure, but on Spider-Man? I don't know. I just think it's a little bit strange. But anyway, he does come with a bunch of accessories, so I want to take a closer look at those, and then we'll take a closer look at the Samurai Spider-Man. And there we go. So the figure comes with eight interchangeable hands. We get his katana and then the sheath for the katana and then we get these two chains right here with hooks that attach to the web shooters that you can attach to his wrists. Uh, now looking at these hands, I think they look pretty good, but this is something that kind of tells me that it might be a knockoff and I keep repeating myself, but you know, just looking at the web shooter ones, it seems like there's just a little bit extra plastic around the edge. I don't know, but regardless, I do like the sculpted detail. A little bit slapdash with that gold paint right there. And same thing with that right there. So I think it could have been a little bit cleaner when it comes to the gold, you know. But, not, you know, not too bad. I still think it looks pretty good. So he has these katana holding hands right here. Then he has these uh, whipping hands, of course. You get these much wider, relaxed, open hands right here, I guess, for him to hold the chain so that the chain can rest in there. The paint looks a little bit better on this hand right here. So, yeah, I think the hands look pretty good. Then you have these little web shooters that you attach to his wrists, which I think are awesome because they look like little spiders. They actually even have little legs, you know, so you can see the four, you know, bands that go around there. So when you put the wrists on, you want to make sure that the abdomen of the spider is facing away from the figure and just move that around there. And then we'll just take one of these right here and getting these on here can be a little tricky. So you want to just make sure that you're aiming correctly when you port that in and there it goes. So eh, it wasn't that tricky after all. But looking at one of these right here, uh, you have to remove this whole piece and then just put this right back on. And you can rotate this little loop right there side to side as you'd like and you can just put that on there, then you'll have the chain. Now I measured this chain out to be about 13 and a half inches long, so I think that's pretty good. You get some very good length with these, and I really like the hooks at the end. Whoop, I get a little bit of a mess over here, but you can see that we get this nice gunmetal color, which I really dig a lot, so I think that's pretty awesome. And then we also get the katana, which is a little scuffed. Uh, I'm a little bummed about that, but yeah, not the worst thing. I do like the bright, shiny silver paint that we get here. I like how the hilt looks right here. That's really cool looking. Get the little spider, nice attention to detail. Get this pretty faint gold color right over here too, so not too bad. And then you can just put this right into the sheath right there. Come on, get in there, and that's pretty sweet, so that's cool. And then you have this little peg right here where you can port this onto the back of Spider-Man. Get out of there, chain. Ah, there's so much extra chain, but yeah, you can see the hole right there. And just 
button right there. So I think that's pretty sweet and that's articulated and everything. I forgot to mention that the figure actually does come with instructions. So yeah, it just tells you how to do all that stuff. I just showed you how to do, but I thought it was worth mentioning. So here's looking at the head sculpt, not looking too bad. I again, the colors kind of throw me off a little bit. The teal is a little bit strange. And then we get some purple around his eyes. Again, it's just a little bit different, but you know, this whole concept thing is meant to be different. Uh, one thing I gotta say I don't really like about it is the way the eyes are sculpted. It kind of looks like either a confused or a sad Spider-Man. Nobody likes a sad Spider-Man, as emo as Peter Parker can be. But I think that looks pretty good though for the most part. I like how we have some little sculpted edges around the chin right over here and you can see his nose and his mouth. We get a little Deadpool drip right over there on the very back. And looking right over here with all these shingles and everything, it looks pretty good. I think the line work for the paint actually came out fairly good. Uh, you can see a little bit of gappage between these, so that allows for articulation. So you have that shingled effect right there, which I dig. I think it looks pretty nice. And then removing this, you can see we get the spider symbol right there. Not looking too bad. We get this very nice dark blue. I'm liking it. And looking on the front right there, you can see the spider logo. Paint came out fairly clean. I could see just a little bit missing right there and right there. So it could be a little bit better, and I like the web pattern that we see on this chest plate too. I think that's pretty awesome. Pretty creative. Digging that, you can see the paint getting a little sloppy right there. And these shoulder pads don't look too bad. Again, a little bit of extra slop on the paint. Same thing on that side. Oh no, not so much on this side, sorry. And one thing I really do like is um, on the fabric portions, I mean, it's all fake fabric, but you can see that we get some nice gray mixed in with blue over here. I really dig that a lot. I think that's very cool. I'm digging that. And then looking at the forearms right there, not looking too shabby. And again, there's those web shooters, which I really dig a lot, looking pretty cool. And then we have his, was his Tonto? His Tato sword, or you know, this is the suicide sword right over there, little blade, you know, as emo as he can be. Yeah, it's not out of reach. Oh, that's so sad. No, Spider-Man wouldn't do that. You know, too many people care about him. Anyway, looking at his skirt right over here, it looks pretty good. And looking on the back, you can see some nice line work and everything, the spider butt, again, more teal. And just lift up the flap right there, see more spider butt. And again, I really like the gray mixed in with the blue right there. I think that looks very dope. I'm liking that a lot. You can see the hinges. I did find these to be a bit stiff. I guess there's like a little bit of extra paint right over here. So I did have to crack those joints to get those moving. And then looking at his shins, they don't look too shabby at all. And then we get those feet right there. Not looking too bad either. Yeah, and then he has a little bit of treading right there on the bottom of his chunkless. Now for the articulation, like I said, it's not too bad. So you can, well, let's start with the katana. You can rotate that left and right like so, and you can wiggle it forward and back, whichever direction. It's on a ball joint right there. You get side to side movement at the head, and I like how he has this little flappy underneath his chin right there, so it doesn't hinder that articulation. I think that's very smart. You can get his head looking up that much. He does have a neck joint in there as well as the head joint, but yeah, you only get him to look up that much. He can look down that much and he does not really have that much neck pivot, but it can wobble a little bit. He does have ball jointed shoulder pads, so you can rotate these left and right as you wish. And they will pop off if you try to lift them upward because of the friction between this little piece right there and that little piece right there. So getting his shoulders moving outward is tricky. Uh, you kind of have to move them back like that not just straight outward. So, yep, and then there goes that little piece and we just pop that right back onto place. So without it falling off, it will move outward that much. He does have a little bit of an armpit joint in there, so it will shift forward and back some, not as much as I'd like it to. Moving the arms forward, you can get him moving forward just that much. He does have a bicep swivel in there. He has a double jointed elbows, and then the wrist moves side to side and it hinges forward and back. Uh, he does have a waist joint that turns side to side. You can get him crunching that much and it will move back that much. You also get some pivot. Oh, actually, no, I lied. Yeah, you can't really get that much pivot in there. But we do get the good side to side movement. The directions show that you can pop this off and remove parts of his armor right over here if you'd like to. Now, he does not have the shifting up and down movement at the legs, so you can really only get the legs moving outward that much. He can kick forward pretty far, though. He will kick forward that much and move back very far. He does have an upper thigh cut in there. He does have the double jointed knees, which look great. And then his ankles can move down. They do move up. You can rotate them side to side. He has has great ankle pivot and he does have toe articulation. And to measure out this figure, you can see that the Samurai Spider-Man is standing right at seven inches tall. And to compare the Samurai Spider-Man to your average Spider-Man figure, we have the Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man. Then to compare the Samurai Spider-Man to your average sized SH figure arts figure that I'm used to seeing, we have a Goku right over there from DBZ and it looks like this thing is huge compared to Goku. I was looking through my collection trying to find another Samurai type figure and the closest I could get is the Transformers Drift right over here, which is kind of crazy. But 
but yeah, you can see the size difference between these two. I want to review more Transformers. If you want to see me review Transformers Masterpiece Inferno, please leave a comment below. And then here he is next to the Marvel Legends Big Time No Let Down Spider-Man. Then here's Samurai Spider-Man holding his chain like the directions tell you to do. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention during the articulation segment is that you can rotate the knees a little bit side to side and the forearms side to side. It's actually the shins that'll rotate over here as well as the forearms right there, but just by a little bit. So yeah, you know, you do get some really good articulation on this figure. I think it's a very interesting concept. Spider-Man being my favorite superhero, I knew I was going to pick this figure at one point or another and I'm glad I got it and especially for a really good price. I only got it for 30 bucks. So if this thing ended up being a knockoff, man, it's one hell of a knockoff and I highly recommend it. And if this is not the legit version and you want to pick up the other more expensive version, I recommend that too because it's a very good figure. So anyway, I hope you guys liked this review. If you did, please hit the like button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. If you want to hit the notification bell and you are subscribed, it'll let you know that Shardimus Prime videos are being uploaded immediately. If you want to see a photo gallery of images, it's all over at MarvelousNews.com. And I have t-shirts and Shardimus Prime tunes and action figures for sale at ShardimusPrime.net slash store. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Shot, we're shot, we're shot in your face. I said, we're shot, we're shot, we're shot in your face. I said,